Aiden Miller's ghost costume flapped in the breeze as he skipped down the sidewalk. His pillowcase, heavy with candy, dragged behind. As typical for a ten-year-old, he loved nothing more in the world than his family, friends, and sugar. Aiden was the kind of kid that didn't dare touch a single vegetable that was served to him. Usually, he hid vegetables behind the napkin when they appeared on his plate, though he never failed to leave room for dessert. He always wanted something sweet to bite, to put it that way. Aiden lived for Halloween. On Christmas, he unwrapped his presents not wearing festive pajamas, but a zombie's rags. On Spirit Day, he wore his school colors beneath a vampire cape. By September, he was loading pumpkins into his mother's shopping cart, despite her assurances that they would not last the month. It was Halloween at last, and Aiden walked beneath the waxing light of a full moon, half hidden by shifting clouds. Aiden wanted to make sure that he could get a lot of candy, but this year it was different. Instead of the sweet and sour delights, he wanted chocolate, his favorite kind of candy. Sadly, to most of the houses he went to, he mostly got lollipops, gummies, licorice, and tablet candies. And barely any chocolate bars. It wasn't what he desired, but he was still going to eat them anyway. He was going to the last house on the block, but stopped at his tracks to see what it was ahead of him. He didn't recognize this house, probably because nobody lived in it. Nobody would live in a rundown house, especially if the windows were shattered and broken. The roof, almost on the verge of collapsing, and planks of the exterior of the house were missing. Well, it's worth a shot, Aiden thought. He slowly walked towards the house, walking up the creaking steps and onto the front porch. Then he knocked on the door, waiting for the door to open. A few seconds had passed and the front door remained closed. Aiden knocked again, but yet nobody answered him. He looked into his bag. It was half empty, but not what he really wanted. He started walking away from the house to go over to the next street, but he stopped to hear a loud slam from behind him. Aiden turned his head to the house, noticing something on the front steps. Whatever it was, he was intrigued to see something out of the ordinary. Maybe someone does live here, he thought. He walked back to the house, his eyes glued to a bowl of what appeared to be candy on the dirty doormat, and not just any candy, but chocolate bars of all kinds. He looked in to see Hershey's, Reese's Pieces, Snickers, Twix bars, Kit Kat bars, and many, many more. Atop the small mountain of chocolate bars was a note written in simple, elegant calligraphy. Help yourself. Aiden obliged, tossing the note aside and scooping one handful then two into his pillowcase. His stomach rumbled, and he emptied the bowl. His pillowcase was so heavy it required two hands to haft over his shoulder. He replaced the bowl and retreated from the house, whose cobwebs were not a decoration, but a permanent fixture. He lumbered home, the weight of his prize reassuringly pressed against the small of his back. The night of trick-or-treating had ended, and Aiden had an entire feast all to himself. As he got home, he sat on the couch in the living room, digging into the pillowcase to start eating. That was until his mother walked in, noticing he had just returned home. Wow, Aiden, did you take every chocolate bar in the world? His mother joked, amazed by his enormous pile of candy that sat next to him. Aiden pulled back his ghost costume, looking up at his mother with a freckled grin. Must have went to every house in the neighborhood. I'm a chocolate millionaire now, Aiden said, picking up a Snickers bar. No, I don't want you eating a lot of candy before bedtime. I don't want you to get sick. His mother left the living room, leaving Aiden by himself. He started unwrapping the chocolate bar and putting it into his mouth, enjoying the rich and creamy taste of peanuts, and the chocolate coating, and the layer of caramel. As he gulped it down, he continued to eat more of his candy. Aiden was on his fifth candy bar, a Twix bar. He unwrapped the shiny plastic that covered the candy bar and popped it into his mouth. And the moment he chomped down on his first bite, he stopped and screamed in pain. The next moment after that, Aiden's parents immediately ran into the living room and were shocked by what had happened to their son. His mother and father dragged him out of the house and drove him to the hospital. The whole way, there was the most upsetting and terrifying experience for anyone in the car. It only took the doctors a few hours to fix Aiden up, his mouth still aching with pain from the sharp objects that were punctured into his gums. Apparently, the Twix bar he bit into was filled with bits of sharp needles and razor blades. It was a hard job to find all the pieces that were either sticking out or buried deep into his bleeding mouth. While his parents sat in the waiting room, impatient with how long it was taking for the doctors to patch Aiden up, 
One of the doctors was finishing up the job by stitching up the small cuts. As the procedure was completed, the doctor removed her latex gloves and threw them away in a nearby trash can. You feel better now, sweetie? The doctor said, a small comforting smile appearing on her face as she tried to talk to Aiden, who was still touching the stitches with the tip of his tongue. Don't mess with the stitches, or you'll hurt your gums more. I want them to hurt more, Aiden responded, leaving the doctor slightly confused. <laughs> you must be joking, right? I'm sure you wouldn't really want that. The doctor chuckled, hoping it was just a dark joke from a child, which was sometimes normal for someone that young to say. No, I enjoy the pain. I want more of it. Her eyes widened. No, no words to let out. All she could do was look at the strange child. What? I want more pain. I love it. I want more of it. The doctor nodded and walked out of her office, shocked to hear all these things that Aiden was saying. Sure, it all must have been a joke, but something about it seemed quite off for her. She walked into the waiting room to get Aiden's parents and led them into the office with her. The doctor and the worried parents had a conversation, not only about the operation, which it turned out Aiden would be fine as long as he didn't mess with the stitches, and there was nothing more with the bits of razors and needles, but about Aiden's odd behavior. She also suggested to them to make sure there weren't any more candy with sharp objects. The parents took Aiden, left the hospital, and were able to dispose all of Aiden's candy into the trash. They had a talk with him about how he shouldn't go trick-or-treating anymore, while Aiden complained about it since Halloween was his favorite holiday, and about his behavior at the hospital, with Aiden passing it off as a funny joke. They sent him to bed right after. Aiden woke up a few hours later. It was still dark and silent outside except for some soft cricket chirps, and he felt his stomach rumble in hunger. He craved more of the excruciating pain. A weird feeling that no sane person would want. But getting out of bed, he quietly tiptoed out of his bedroom and into the kitchen, looking for what he needed. He knew for a fact that his parents only threw the candy away in the trash, but they never took the bag out of the dumpster. So he went to the can and dug out some handfuls of candy bars. Aiden started drooling. He unwrapped a candy bar and popped it into his mouth. As he started chewing, he noticed something different about this one. No sharp objects. For some reason, it tasted awful to him. But what was it that made the other ones better? Was it the sharp pain that stung the inside of his mouth like he liked? Was it the taste of the coppery red blood that traveled down his throat? Aiden spat the chewed remains onto the linoleum floor, then unwrapped another one. He pulled it apart in half, noticed a few needles sticking out of both pieces. He was about to start chewing them, but he stopped as he heard a slight creaking sound in the kitchen. Aiden quickly turned around, noticing a dark figure in the kitchen with him. He couldn't make out who or what it was, but he knew for sure that it wasn't his mother or his father. The tall figure walked closer to him, stepping out of the darkness to reveal himself as a man in a black suit and a brimmed hat. But Aiden couldn't see his face. All he was able to make out was his wide smile. But there was something about that smile that didn't seem right. Each tooth in his smile had different layers of color. They were stripes of yellow, then orange, then white. His teeth. His teeth were made out of candy corn. I see you're enjoying my treat. The mysterious man said, bending down to face Aiden. His voice was dull and low, chilling enough to make the poor little Aiden's hairs rise up on the back of his neck. Go on. Take a bite. You know you want to, the man said. And Aiden started unwrapping each candy bar, shoving it all into his mouth. He opened his mouth at times when chewing, feeling bits of needles and razors sticking into his gums the inside of his mouth. Blood dripped down his chin and onto the floor. Very good, my boy. Very well done. Aiden looked up at the tall man after finishing. He wanted more. Who are you? He asked, his voice trembling as he attempted to look into whatever his eyes would be. I have no name, but you can call me the candy man. The one who provides the perfect candy every year on Halloween for little girls and little boys just like you. The man replied, his candy corn smile growing wider. There... Is there any more left? Aiden asked, barely gurgling from the blood in his mouth. The candy man only laughed softly and loudly, 
possibly loud enough to shake the whole house to wake Aiden's parents up. Then he bent down to face him directly in the eyes, only except Aiden could see that his eyes were pale jawbreakers. It seemed as though this man, man made from, made entirely of candy, candy corn teeth, jawbreaker eyes, and possibly his whole body too. Aiden wasn't sure how to feel about it. He was scared out of his wits indeed, but at the same time, he felt an urge, hunger, and pain. Oh boy, why don't you put on your ghost costume and come trick-or-treating with me? The candy man said, his breath giving off a cotton candy scent as he spoke. Halloween may be over, but the night isn't. And so, little Aiden quietly went to his bedroom, put on his blanket sheet ghost costume, and grabbed his pillowcase to take with him. After that, the candy man grabbed a hold of his hand and walked out of the house and into the quiet streets to have some fun. His parents haven't been woken up from the commotion, and they were unaware their child disappeared. Well, do they know what would happen to their son the next morning? The candy man and Aiden went to each house on the block, looking for sharp objects for the boy to ingest. Going into one of the houses, Aiden walked into the kitchen to look through the cabinets, figuring out what to eat. His stomach rumbled even more. He pulled out a porcelain plate, smashed into a piece on the counter, and started picking them up. He pulled up his ghost costume, holding a small shard of glass over his mouth, and released it, gulping it down in a painful, yet satisfying swallow. He could feel the sharp edges of the glass cutting straight down his throat as he swallowed it. The loud smashing sound had woken someone up, because he and the candy man heard footsteps coming down the stairs. An adult man in his nightshirt and underwear walked into the kitchen, noticing the commotion coming from the child in the ghost costume. Who are you? The adult shouted at him, holding a wooden baseball bat in his hand. What the hell are you doing in my house? The man didn't seem to notice the candy man in the kitchen, just Aiden, the mess that he made. It was as if, as if he couldn't see them. As if he wasn't there at all. Get out of my house and get yourself in some serious trouble, the man shouted again, raising his bat towards Aiden. The boy stood frozen in fear, his eyes only focused on the weapon in the man's hands. The man charged over to Aiden, swinging his bat around as the intruder attempted to dodge every swing that came towards him. The candy man sat on the counter, watching the cat and mouse game take place in the kitchen of the stranger's house. Good thing Aiden was a fast kid. Despite his diet and sugar and now sharp objects, he was able to outrun him through the house, and eventually the candy man hopped off the counter, stuck out his leg, and tripped the man. He tumbled forward and landed headfirst onto the edge of the coffee table, knocking himself out, a thin cut appearing across his forehead. Blood oozing forth. Aiden stopped and looked down at the man. Don't worry, he's not dead yet. Candyman said, kneeling down and biting down onto his neck. Blood spurted everywhere, even on Aiden's blanket sheet. The man's body twitched as he tore into his flesh, chomping down. A few minutes later... Most of his dead body was now partially eaten. The candy man got up and wiped his mouth on his jacket sleeve. Then Aiden vomited through his costume. Mostly bloody chunks, bits of chocolate, and a few of the sharp objects. Now he is. Boy, go finish up your treat. Aiden nodded and walked into the kitchen to finish eating some of the leftover shards of glass. Once he'd finished, the candy man took him to more houses eat more objects, including nails, sewing needles, and glass shards. Aiden went into the kitchen of the house, digging through the silverware drawer. He pulled out a kitchen knife, looked at the reflection on the blade, knowing what was about to happen next. The candy man stared at the knife in the child's hands. He knew it was about to get interesting. Aiden gripped the handle and opened his mouth wide, shoving the knife in. He managed to push the knife down his throat. A mouthful of blood spilled forth. It came out like a crimson waterfall. His mouth was so full of bodily fluids that he couldn't even keep it in. The blood sloshed onto the floor, getting Aiden's clothes and shoes soaked. It was a bloody mess. And the candy man. The candy man watched. He stopped and started choking on the knife since it didn't go down his throat all the way, which was also filled with more and more blood. He clawed at his neck. Pain now unbearable to him. The candy man grinned at him as Aiden struggled to breathe. The boy fell over and didn't move a muscle. The next morning, as the sun had risen, the boy's parents had woken up. Mr. Miller got out of bed, walking into the hallway. 
into Aiden's bedroom door. He knocked lightly on the door, waiting for a response. He didn't hear anything, so he knocked again. Aiden, you all right in there? Mr. Miller asked. Knocking again, he didn't hear anything. He opened the bedroom door and saw Aiden in his ghost costume, lying on the floor, motionless. Aiden? Mr. Miller crouched down and tapped him, but he didn't respond. He pulled back the sheet and screamed. His wife came up from behind, seeing her son's body on the floor. Screams and an ambulance siren that filled the quiet neighborhood. The bodies of a child and an adult had been found. It was a strange mystery. Mostly, it was kids that had been found with sharp objects inside their bodies, often a, often a body or two, around Halloween. Maybe Halloween wasn't safe for children, knowing that the candy they had collected might contain sharp objects in them. But, however, the thing that was off-putting about it was why the bodies were found so much inside of them. It scared parents just to think about it. Somewhere in the neighborhood, there was an old run-down house where the candy man lived. The same one where Aiden had last collected candy. And he waited. Waited for next Halloween to have his victims take some more of his delicious and savory candy. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video. Because this is October, I'm going to make this nice, short, and sweet. If you'd like to help support the show or the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. If you'd like to get yourself some new Halloween and creepypasta-inspired teas, you can head over to etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea. And if you want to catch me... Creeps McPasta and Mew during our live Halloween tour around the southern U.S., head over to creepypasta.showfetti.com. That's creepypasta.s-h-o-f-e-t-t-i.com. Hang on to your hats, kids, because this year is a 31-day Halloween countdown. Happy Halloween and sweet dreams.